Hello and welcome. My name is Jody Lynn Craven, founder of Abundance Consciousness, and this is my dear friend, Heather Marie. Hi, I'm Heather Marie, founder of Soulgate. Welcome to Channel Squared, where we have extraordinary conversations about everyday life topics. <laughs> we sure do. Today we are diving into purpose. I feel like it needs like a bum, 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 <laughs> bum, bum. <laughs> right? I mean, I'm sure that is the most common question that you are asked as a channel. I know I get asked this question a lot. You know, how do I know what my purpose is? Do I have a purpose? Am I living my purpose? So Heather and I are in our, uh, in, in our channels and uh, we're going to channel some information for you guys today. We're going to talk all about purpose, how we found ours what that journey looked like and how you can find yours. And this, Heather, this is actually what you do for clients. Right? This is, this yes. is what I do for clients. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is the number one question. In fact, that my clients uh, give me is why am I here? <laughs> why am I here? All right. Where do we want to start with this conversation? Do we want to go personal first or? Sure. Let's go personal first. <laughs> Great. So what what is purpose? Like what do you what what does that even mean? Well, I think when when you think about purpose, there's kind of like I think there's like a disconnect in some regard to like what is purpose and what isn't purpose and you know, people confuse like what is my purpose with why am I here? And I think they're very different, different, different. <laughs> That's a new word today. I just invented that. <laughs> 2022, the year, making up our own 20, words. <laughs> exactly. 2022, different is going to be the word of the year. Um, the, the, the difference is uh, purpose is like, the thing you are about in the way of your creation, where I feel like why am I here is more like what was the uh, plan for me to experience while I'm here? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, like I said, they're kind of, they're similar, but I feel like they're still different. <laughs> different. Okay. Can you give me an example of, of yours or a, like a client example, just to like bring it home for everybody that's watching right now? Sure. So, um, so I will, I'll just go with mine. So, you know, my purpose for coming here is to um, anchor in the new energy to, to bring to the new earth plane or to the new density, right? So there were a lot of ways for me to do this, um, you know, some of which being through channeling, some of it being through soul tattoos, some of it being, you know, just through general communication that's like uplifting and inspiring, right? Mm -hmm. So my purpose was to connect everybody up so we all can go. Now, why am I here? Well, because we're in a time of ascension. See yeah. how they're different? Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, you know, everything that I've done in my timelines to this point has been to prepare me for this point and then tomorrow's point and the next day's point. And um, <laughs> I just saw the comments. <laughs> <laughs> it well, is also that's to so look nice. pretty, Scott. Scott said, I thought it was to look pretty. Yes, that's also oh. on the docket for... Oh, the reason oh. Heather is. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so nice. <laughs> um, but so that, you know, <laughs> that totally derailed my <laughs> train of thought. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> um, <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about purpose and why we're here on this lifetime and them having two yeah. different, two different reasons. And, um, people really struggle <clears throat> with this question. 
And um, I think when th- I think mostly when things aren't going well in life. Yeah. Because that's when exactly. it kind of comes up, you know, if, is it really this hard? If, it, if it's really this hard, then maybe I'm not supposed to do it. Or am I doing the right thing? Or am I on the right path? Um, and especially if you're doing something really different that you've never done before, it can be really scary. Definitely. I mean, you know, and looking at my, my process of getting to where I am right now, you know, I spent 25 years of my life in a career that was not spiritual, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Did I help people spiritually? Yeah. Did I do it knowingly? No, I didn't. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I had no idea as many light workers that are here. Don't so many people don't even realize like that, even though they're doing something that seems unrelated, it still Mm -hmm. is related. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think you said something so perfectly earlier, you know, every lifetime has prepared you for this moment and the next moment. And I think every day that we've been here on this planet at this time in this lifetime has also prepared us for this moment and the next moment and the next moment. Like I know when I look back, you know, I, I felt like I was kind of all over the freaking place. What do I want to do with my life? That was like the big joke when I was a kid because I changed my mind so many times, like a kid really knows, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, That's one of the big jokes in my family too. I was like the job jumper of like town. Everyone was like, oh, here she comes, you know, got my new apply for a job. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. Right? Which profession is she going to choose? And I, I mean, what I thought I would be doing for the rest of my life um, is not what I'm doing now. What I thought I would be doing for the rest of my life five years ago, even six years ago is not what I'm doing with my life now. Like, but I look back and I can see how every turn in my life, every, every road that I went down brought me here and taught me something, you know, like, I I mean, I I had a foreclosure on the very first property that I had ever purchased. And that, you know, gave me this desire and this fire inside to learn about money and how it actually works. And that led me to my brokerage business. And then that led me to spirituality, essentially breaking down as an A-type entrepreneur, burning out, um, dying inside, led me to, to this spiritual conversation, led me to the energy behind money and everything that I, that I coach about. But so that pivotal moment that I thought was so hard and so like, oh my gosh, you know, why would anybody have to go through that to learn something? Like it was a pivotal moment. I I don't know that I would be here if that, that train wreck wouldn't have happened in my own life. Yeah. I mean, definitely. And, you know, um, even when, you know, I think about when I'm, when I'm teaching people how to channel, Mm -hmm. one of the most important things is listening. You know, when you are receiving information, you have to listen. Now you may be listening with your third eye, or you may be listening with, you know, your root chakra, or you may be listening with your heart space or, or whatever you may be listening with. Poor thing. Jody Lynn has a cold, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying really hard. <laughs> I <hate it. laughs> I just thank you for showing up today. <laughs> like what a testament to your character. I'd have been like, I can't, I'm sick. No. <laughs> um, but you know, like one of the things about, uh, you know, channeling is that you have to listen, you know, and whether you're listening with your ears or your eyes or whatever, you, you have to listen if you're going to hear the message. Right. And for me in my uh, previous career, and all of the many jobs that I did leading into that career, the one thing that I really learned was how to listen and how to communicate and how to communicate with a lot of different personalities. So it's Ooh, funny. What do you mean by that? A lot of like communicating with other personalities, you mean people that you're talking to or you taking on different personalities or both? Both. 
<laughs> both really. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but both, you know, the thing is, is when you're, when you're dealing with people like actual people, not like spiritual beings, but like actual people, you have a lot of personalities, right? And we talked last week about ego and usually for many people, ego is the one driving the car, right? Mm-hmm. So ego is the one that's in the forefront. That's, you know, either really happy, really sad, or really pissed, right? But never yep. peaceful. Ego's never peaceful. Ego's never happy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's never enough. It's never enough, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, in dealing with ego on all of these different levels, it made me, it trained me to be versatile in, in my communication style, to be able to articulate the messages as they come through unknowingly, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and the, the other side of that is dealing with beings on the other side, you know, they have very uh, unique personalities, you know, and, and they will, sort of mold and, you know, uh, mirror and emulate your personality. So, you know, we have someone watching right now who is uh, a little bit of a rebel when it comes to uh, spirituality and, and how their life purpose was and how it has now shifted. And it's a different type of plan and purpose. And The thing is, is that this person came in for one thing, started doing something else. And when the beings began working with this person, Mm -hmm. it was kind of a like sarcastic, you know, what do you want thing? And then it was like, hey, man, mad respect. And so it was like, as they worked together, you got to see this really cool relationship develop. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that is something that is really special about like your plan and your purpose and your path and all of the things that lead you to the road that you're on when you really take a step back and you like step out of the frame and you look at the whole picture you really see it for the beauty that it is yeah that was probably a little long-winded but there you go (laughs) no but I think it's 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 also necessary because Um, because this is a big topic and this is something that people, people fumble with. And, um, I know for myself, um, I, I, I never really, it's not that I didn't feel that I was on purpose. Um, I, I guess I've, I've always felt like I was where I needed to be. Like this was the next step and had this confidence Um, my parents, you know, raised me to believe that anything that I wanted to do, I I could do and I could achieve. They never put any barriers on me. So I feel really lucky that, that I had them growing up. And even when I switched from, you know, before I had my brokerage business, I was in safety, oil field safety, uh, of all things (laughs) (laughs) before that environmental technology, (laughs) before that nursing, (laughs) (laughs) all of these things right and and I had a really good job when I was in safety and I saw this opportunity with my brokerage business to have more freedom of time more freedom of income and to just really build a life for myself that I couldn't see in the safety realm and I remember having this conversation with my parents because I had to talk myself into it. Like, okay, now I am ready. I am ready to do this, to rely all on me and, you know, go full-time in the brokerage business and just, just have a business that supports me, not an every two weeks income coming in from, from an employer. And I remember sitting down with my parents and just to let them know, not really, not really get their permission, but obviously for them to bless bless my decision, I guess. And, you know, let me know that they were behind me. And it was so interesting because I had no fear about my mom. I was like, oh yeah, she's going to be like, yeah, hey, Jody, <laughs> you know, whatever. Right. <laughs> but I thought my dad would be the more like collective one. And like, you know, are you sure? Like you, you won't have a guaranteed paycheck anymore. And that's scary. Like he's, he worked at the same place for 47 years. So he, you know, he was an employee for 47 years at the same place, right? Like diehard employee, company man. 
Um, and it, it was actually the opposite when I had this conversation with them. My mom was like, are you sure this sounds scary? And my dad's like, you don't have a husband or any kids and like, you don't own a house anymore. Like you are free to leap and fall on your face, but we'll be here if you catch you like go. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm running now. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. But and that's what I wanted to bring up was there was this feeling like in my heart, it felt right. And there was that, you know, fear that was there, but in my heart, deep down, I could feel that that feeling, and I don't even know how to quantify it, but that I was going the right direction. Like this was the next step for me. And, and going into coaching and teaching abundance consciousness and the fluid money blueprint was completely different. I was having these downloads and, and ideas and started to see my world differently, see money differently, start to see corruption and all of these things. And, and, uh, just started talking about it with other people. And, I felt like there was a lot of people saying to me, you need to teach this. You need to teach this. You need to teach this. And I was like, no, nope, I'm good because I was listening to my fear rather than my heart. And it kept coming back over and over and over again, kind of like this knock on the door of, you know, somebody that won't go away. And it was, you know, my guides because this is my purpose is to teach this, you know, um, at the reason I'm here on this earth at this time is probably because there's tons of corruption and the system needs to be um, completely revamped. And, um, you know, that's that also is the reason why I'm here. But eventually when I said yes to teaching this, the feeling came back and I felt into my heart rather than the fear, the fear of judgment, the fear of persecution, the, the fear of, you know, being sounding, being crazy, whatever. Um, and really leaned into my heart and I could feel like this was the right step. People need to hear this. So I think we need to listen yeah. to our heart more. <laughs> Definitely. Well, and you know, I, I want to, you said something that was really like important that I think that people sometimes feel like they're on their own, that they have to go it alone. You know, and, um, you know, I, I talk to people sometimes that are like, you know, oh yeah, I have no relationship with my parents. I was blessed with parents that were very supportive. And, you know, although when I first started talking about spirituality with my parents and they probably absolutely hate that I tell stories about them. So mom, dad, if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, you know, the, I remember the very first time that I had a like spiritual conversation with my parents, I remember like instantly feeling or seeing or knowing or reading the energy. And my mom, I swear all my mom could see was me sitting in a dark corner with candles around me and a Ouija board, what? you know? <laughs> You know, she was probably like, oh my God, my daughter's summonsing the devil. Where did we go wrong? You know, but, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, my, my dad, on the other hand was, you know, a lot more open-minded to it. I think my mom was a little fearful of like, oh my God, what is my kid getting into? You know? And if you talk to them now, they're both like, you know, yeah, my daughter, she's a fortune teller, you know? <laughs> Um, but, you know, I think that, um, that it's important that, you know, who, to whoever needs to hear this, that you do not need to walk your path alone. When you came here, there were souls that signed up to support you. So whether that is Jody Lynn, whether that's me, whether that's your folks, whether that's your friends, your animals, the plants growing in your garden, all of these people, places, things, pets, animals, whatever, mm -hmm. are being brought together for exclusively your experience. And they're here to support you so that you're not alone. So don't feel like you have to go it alone. You know, you can learn what your purpose is, freak out if you need to, and then reach for support. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're listening to this, you were brought to this. You were brought to us. 
you know, so reach out. We'll help you. (laughs) Oh man. I just, just on that note, um, Heather would be the one that you want to connect with when it comes to purpose, because that is her specialty. Um, and I just want to direct those who were brought here for that reason to seek her, her direction and intelligence, um, because it changed my life. And I, I, I talk about this a lot, but the moment I remember my very first channeling session, uh, going there to verify information that I had received about abundance consciousness and the way that we see money and the way that I was going to teach it and my course and all of this stuff. And, and within the first like 30 seconds, they were like, yes, your channel is good. You don't need to ask us any more questions. And I'm like, okay, so like, is <laughs> okay, is this my purpose? And um, they like punched me in the face. Um, They were like, oh yeah, you're going to, I don't even remember what the the actual words were, Um, but you you are going to bring forth the new earth currency. And they're like, and you thought you were just building a course. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) what? (laughs) but it opened having that session opened my eyes to how big your purpose can be. And the reason why you're here on this earth, because sometimes we feel like, you know, we want to do these grand things and maybe be in the limelight or, or whatever. And, And that might not necessarily be your purpose is to be there, but, um, all of these things connect the people in your life. Like you were saying, all of these things are important. And all of these people that are here today are truly changing the world, whether it's in the limelight or in the background supporting. Um, It's just remarkable. Well, and you know, that's something that's, I think, really important to understand that even if your purpose is not to save the world, it's totally okay if it's not. Mm-hmm. Your purpose could be to ha- be here to have fun, to play, to have children, to bring forth next, you know, the next iteration's leaders, the next world leaders. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you're here to support, you know, a group of friends that, you know, develop some new technology you know, that's going to change the way that we live our life. Like, and that's going to be free for everyone because it's created out of love. Like, you know, who's to say that you aren't just here to, you know, love one of those people who are creating that. I did a session with a a gal and she was, um, she wanted to know what her purpose was. And she was very, um, concerned about the fact that she ran in a circle of brilliant minds that were changing the world. And she had no desire to participate. She wanted to be friends with them. She loved them. She loved hanging around with them. It was great, but really she just wanted to like live her life and have cool friends that did epic shit. It wasn't like she wanted to go do the epic shit. And so Her, you know, her guides came to her and said, you know, you're just here to live your life, to be the support, to enjoy and play and have fun, you know, garden, play with your kids, love your husband, you know, enjoy the relationships that you have. That's it. There's no, you came here for nothing else, just that. And to her, that was all she needed because it gave her permission to be able to just be and do that really just enjoy. And that, and that's interesting too, because you've told me that a few different times that different people have come into your life that you've had sessions with where their only job was to have fun or to enjoy life. And, and, um, I've seen people walk away from those conversations sort of crushed like, Oh man, I'm supposed to do, like, I thought I was here to do big things. And, and if, somebody is in that position right now where they feel like torn between that, having fun, enjoying their life and maybe something bigger. I I want to remind you that that is a big thing. 
Let me repeat that. Huge. Enjoying life, having fun is huge. That is a huge purpose because you actually do it. Go out into your life and be blissful and joyful and and enjoy every inch and you know, like ounce that you can get out of this life in everybody that you touch, everyone that comes into contact with you, you are completely changing their vibration without you doing a thing. Like that is a massive, massive, massive purpose on this planet to bring joy through experiencing joy yourself. Don't you agree? Absolutely. You know, I mean, look, when we're all in a room full of people, and you hear a group over to the side and they are laughing it up, whooping it up, having a great time. You can't help but giggle and laugh to yourself about, man, they're just having so much fun and it's infectious, right? Yep. So you experiencing joy and, and participating in the joy brings more joy. Even if it's not your joy to experience or create, you just being in the experience of the joy lets you have joy too. So Mm -hmm. if you're here for the purpose of living and enjoying and loving and just having joy, enjoy it. Like live life to the fullest because you, by you being in joy, your joy becomes infectious to everyone and everything around you. Mm -hmm. And it's like you send out this new vibration that's of a higher frequency, you know, to everyone in your, in your field, really. Yep. Yeah. That's a big deal. Huge, huge. Okay. So we were talking earlier about listening, listening to those cues, you know, go left, go right. You know, they're telling you your purpose. They're sending you signs, whether it's an actual billboard or, you know, <laughs> you know, somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, would you like to do this or whatever? But, um, let's, let's be more, if we can be more specific about listening for our purpose. If something doesn't not feel right, but if something is difficult in a, like, say you have a new business and you're going in this direction and it's not that easy Does it really mean that that's not your purpose? Could it mean that it's not your purpose? What do you think? I mean, I have kind of mixed feelings about this because, and this is a really good question. I'm glad that you asked it because I feel like there is a resistance to things working out in your favor when you don't believe that it is to be yours. You know, are you resisting whatever it is that you're trying to create? Mm -hmm. Are you afraid of being successful? Are you afraid of owning the big house? Are you afraid of, you know, what it means if you have children? Like, are you afraid of, you know, what is my spouse going to think of this? Right. Um, Or partner, like what, like, is there a resistance to the creation or can you intuitively feel that maybe it's not right. Like something is happening. I'll give you an example. Uh, We are um, looking to move our residents. And as we have been looking, you know, when we first started looking, there was a lot of uh, opportunity and it was very easy to find things and things were, you know, in the budget that we have set for our residents. And over the course of a, you know, couple of months, there's literally zero inventory. And now we're starting to see things kind of in the news that are like a little bit like, hmm, I'm not sure, you know, and we're starting to see little signs and signals. that's like, well, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And now we're kind of going, hmm, maybe this is a sign, <laughs> you mm. know, yep. you know, and, and, and in addition to that, there are other opportunities that are now presenting themselves. Now, there has been something that has slightly changed in our conversation about our residents. And that is the type of space, the amount of space, that's all kind of the same, but what we wanna pay has changed a little bit. 
And so now that we're really like thinking more into it, now new opportunities are presenting themselves. So someone could look at this and go, oh, you're just not meant to move because you're meeting resistance. Or you can look at it like something better is coming. And that's why those other things are not working out. So I think it's really just perspective, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think you have to feel into what it means to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, what do you think about that? I I completely agree. And I think maybe not just jumping to a decision. I mean, Mm -hmm. I've been taught, you know, in so many entrepreneur books, you know, be quick to make a decision and slow to change it. Um, And I'm not saying that that's not correct. Um, But for you, when I listen to you speak about this house in particular, um, you're not just jumping to that conclusion that, oh, it's not the right time or the right place to move, or maybe we shouldn't be moving. You're not deciding those things. You're kind of just, you know, taking a step back. And going, okay, what, what's here that I'm not seeing or that I'm not listening to? Maybe what's changed? And, and it's my favorite thing to do is come from that space of curiosity. Like, okay, because you might be like one degree off of what you're supposed to be doing. Like I went from being a financial advisor, having a brokerage business to teaching the energy behind money. They're, for me now, understanding them both, they're like, way over here, different spectrums. Um, but it was one degree off, you know, just a small, like slight movement, but without it, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have been able to, if that makes sense. So really stepping back and being curious, like maybe what, what is working. And I think uh, our purposes are really connected to, to joy. Um, to, to things that it maybe make us happy or that we love to do. And I, I think that's something that I, I teach in my course anyway, is that we don't enough know what we love to do. <laughs> well, what do you love to do? People are like, I don't know. <laughs> totally. I mean, question. <laughs> you know, that's something that, you know, sometimes Quinn and I um, will talk about how, what, like what people want, you know, and mm-hmm. he'll ask me sometimes, what do you want? I'll be like, I don't know what I want. <laughs> Tell me what I want, you know? And I mean, you should see us trying to make a dinner uh, decision. It's really something that is the hardest decision in the world to make, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I think probably everybody can relate to that one, but, you know, I think that it's just, um, you know, you just, sometimes you just don't know what you want, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's okay to not know what you want, but don't not know what you want and then never go investigating to figure it out. Like that's just being complacent and lazy. Like, you know, your job here is to figure out what you want, what brings you joy. Like, you know, like it's, it's not that hard. Just like, look, listen, Mm -hmm. What are you gifted in even, Mm -hmm. you know, following those gift sets? Because every single person on this planet, I think, has gift sets, even if it is, um, you know, one individual I know because I was there for her, her session with you about purpose. And, you know, it was it was about enjoying life. And I look at her and she is gifted at, you know, bringing forth this exuberant amount of joy to a moment like it's just enriched with her like you can tell after you said that I was like oh yeah that's totally her gift it makes sense um but what are your what what do you think your gifts are me or everybody I I mean everybody yeah 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 (laughs) that's great I was like well I can tell you (laughs) no I mean (laughs) But I think that, I think that that's exactly right. You know, it's like, what, what are the things that, what is it that you want Mm -hmm. and what do you have available to you now that can provide you with what you want, Mm -hmm. you know, 
the earth plane is full of um, opportunities. You know, all of the potential desires are here on the earth plane. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the infinite opportunities, the infinite possibilities, and the fact that everything already exists, why are you not doing all the things? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? What do you want? Absolutely. And I think purpose and plan aside, it just comes back to what do you want? Yep. I think sometimes we limit ourselves, well, a lot of times we limit ourselves on what we think we could do because of one, what we think we should be doing. You know, I should have a good job that has a pension or, you know, whatever. <laughs> right. Right. Or our perception of what makes money or what will support us. And, um, and if, if you're there at that point too, like I can't possibly in your mind, you're thinking, I can't possibly do this and create a life out of it. Um, notice that and really lean into it. Why not? And is that absolutely true? Is there nobody that's ever done anything as wild and crazy as that? Like there's literally a dude, my husband watches on YouTube that wrecks trucks and he has like <laughs> millions of followers. So he gets paid a lot of money from views on YouTube to wreck trucks. Yep. Like there's, there's, I mean, um, Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, and that's the thing is like, it's so funny that you bring up YouTube specifically, right? Because, you know, there are people who make millions of dollars giving away millions of dollars, right? Yeah. There's people who make millions of dollars eating. <laughs> eating Just food. Eating. <laughs> Just eating. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and how fun is it that we um, live in a time where this is a possibility? Who would have thought 50 years ago that you could get paid for wrecking trucks, giving away other people's money and eating, and that you could get paid handsomely as if you were, you know, an athlete or, you know, um, professor or a doctor or a lawyer or something that you spent a lot of time and money at school becoming. Mm -hmm. It's really extraordinary, actually. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. Uh, yes. Um, Let me look at the comments here and see why it's so funny. We're like, totally wavelengthing today. Um, go ahead, Jody. What were you going to say about Scott? I, I was going to say, uh, he said, or people are afraid, you know, um, we were talking about the reasons why they don't think they can do something. Um, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. That's. And, and I think from my perspective, if you find yourself sitting in this fear, you're curious about it. Listen to it, you know, is it coming from a place of, you know, past trauma? I'm afraid I'm going to fail or I'm going to, you know, I'm fall off my bike. So I don't want to get on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to skin my knees again. You know that. Okay. That's great. I, I always look within to what I call baby Jody, you know? Um, and when I don't baby Jody has a tantrum and then tries to like, smash things like a bull in a china shop. That's, you know, that's my, <laughs> my inner, you know, fight or flight mode is like, run, hide, get out of here, <laughs> like fight your way out. <laughs> um, and I'm cognizant of that. I know that about myself. And I can see that when the fear bubbles up, like just the same conversation we were having about me move, moving into the coaching practice and teaching people about the energy behind money. I was terrified terrified because I thought people would think I was weird and because I didn't read this out of a book and you know who's gonna listen to me and why you know why why would they listen to me why would anybody take advice from me and 
really sitting with all of that fear. And it was really fear coming from like an ego perspective. Like, what if I get judged? And totally. I'm sh- sure people did judge me and okay. But for me, I always bottom line things like, what's the worst case scenario? Okay, Jody, you know, somebody judges you or they don't like it. And then nothing, maybe it'll hurt my feelings. Okay. Like, is it the end of the world? No. Okay. And then I can move from that perspective to, okay, I'm a little less afraid now and a little less afraid now and a little less afraid. And then eventually like looking back on that time, I don't feel that same fear whatsoever anymore. It's, it's surprising that it was even there, but I think just acknowledging it really helped me release it. Yeah. I mean, and you know, that, that's something that when I think about when I came out of the spiritual closet to the world, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it, it was scary. You know, I definitely experienced that fear as well. You know, it was, you know, is my family going to judge me? Are they going to think I'm a weirdo? Are they going to think I'm making it up? Like, is this, you know, am I making it up? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. like, it, you know, it, there's just, there's so many things that can, you know, run the, the gambit when you are talking about your purpose and your plan and, you know, why you're here. And, you know, when you choose a life that is um, maybe a little controversial, it can, it can, you know, it can make things feel more scary And the thing is, is that even if you are afraid, just do it anyway. You know, I had blue hair. (laughs) So anybody who follows me on any of my, my private social media accounts knows about my blue hair. And I had wanted blue hair or just colorful hair pretty much my whole life. Like I felt like I should have unicorn hair. And I, um, about mm, a year, it was in 2018, I guess, uh, or something like that. That's, that was a, um, uh, it was the time to go ahead and get the blue hair. And this (laughs) was right, you know, kind of like before I really put myself out there publicly, um, as, you know, soul gate and as a channel, you know, and that was like helping paid clients. Um, and so I think that the blue hair thing kind of helped condition me for adversity, you know, people who didn't like my blue hair. I remember one day I came into my office and, uh, met with a client and the client was like, Oh, you colored your hair. And I said, yeah, blue, do you like it? And she was like, (laughs) not at all. (laughs) And part of me in a minute was like, oh gosh, that hurt. And then, you know, the little fairy that lives inside my brain laughed. And I was like, well, at least she's honest, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay, well, you know, at least you're honest and moved on about my day. And what was really interesting is because I feel like because I didn't really react the next time I saw her, she says to me, you know, I really actually love that blue hair. She's like, it just suits you somehow. Mm -hmm. And she didn't like it at all. (laughs) She just got over her shock factor. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think, I think honestly, most, most things when people aren't, most times when people judge you, it's really them judging a piece of themselves or a, a piece of their own insecurity coming forth. It's their own stuff. Okay, great. Like, you no. Know, yeah. Yeah. So just remind yourself of that. And I clung to people who understood until I felt like I could stand on my own two feet. And like had, you know, you and so many other people really close to me, like saying, you're doing great. Like, we got you. It's amazing. Um, Every step of the way. So I didn't have to feel alone. 
And mm-hmm. I think it's coming back to that as, as well. Like you said earlier, you're not alone, whether it's, you know, the plants you have in your backyard, the animals that you have, the spouse that you have, or the partner, uh, your guides, you know, th- this life was uniquely set up for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything and you it. know, the thing is, is there are people that have been very Im- Im- influential and important in my life. And in the coming into my purpose and executing my plan has had some of these people fall out of my life because it's too much for them to, it's too, it's either they don't want to, or it's just too much for them to understand, or it's just not, we're just not aligned anymore. And that's okay. They were there for the time that you know, I needed them to be there and they needed me to be there. And our union was for that time. And now it's not so much. And, you know, I have had many friends who knew me as, you know, this particular skill set that I don't even talk to anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Doesn't mean I don't like them. Doesn't mean I don't love them. Mm -hmm. They're just not in the picture right now. And someday they may come back into the picture. And if they do, I will welcome them with open arms. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, that's okay too. I still send them love, right? Even if you don't really like them when they finally go, (laughs) you can still send them love. (laughs) Uh, You know, that one was really hard for me. And I, um, and you know, this has come up just recently in my life, um, when I changed, I changed really significantly, I think. And I know I changed really significantly. I kind of like jump all in and no toes, <laughs> you know, just like the whole body jump in the deep end. Um, I changed. And I think for me, the people who were close to me at that time, and I can only assume because I haven't had the conversations with them, but they, what I felt was they were watching to see where they fit in my life. And were nervous or scared about the person that I was becoming, not because I was becoming a bad person or anything, but they just didn't know who I was anymore. And uh, that was painful for me. And it's still painful to this day, losing people that I was, that I loved very, very dearly. And then walking out of my life because I, I chose this journey and I still send them love and it still hurts. So if you're in that process right now too, it's okay. Um, You know, I learned a lot from that experience. I still learn a lot from that experience. I mean, the other day I was just talking about it with a friend that I have, like, you know, I felt the trauma resurface of losing a friend because, because my path changed and their path changed. And um, I have this great awareness around it. Um, But everything is meant to be in and is in divine timing. And, and if those relationships are meant to come back or you're meant to support them or, you know, be in one another's lives, then I think that you will, it will just happen. They will come back and you'll have the capacity to forgive and let go and trust once again. And so will they. I have faith Definitely. in that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> so good. I, I want to see if anybody's got questions about purpose um, you know, that, that they want us to ask, maybe we should check in with our guides too, and see if, if there's any, well, I want to give, I want to give a tip on how someone might be able to start looking for their purpose. Okay. And pretty much everyone who's here chatting us in the live, uh, is going to roll their eyes right now. (laughs) So everybody (laughs) prepare, do it in unison. My first tip is to meditate. Mm. (laughs) The thing about meditation and so many people like resist the meditation. I mean, I resist meditation too. Sometimes I'll be completely honest. Sometimes I think, oh gosh, I got to meditate on that. You know, sometimes I'll, you know, not want to channel for myself or whatever. It's ridiculous. I I don't know why I'm like that. But anyway, the, the point is that, uh, In the meditation, when you 
can, and you don't have to meditate for a long time, start out with five minutes and add on a minute every day. And before you know it, you are going to be at like a 45 minute meditation and it's going to be just this awesome experience. So like, don't be afraid to go slow. Um, but the thing is, is, uh, (laughs) the thing is, is that if you meditate, you can go into it with the intention of what is my purpose, Mm -hmm. you know, show me my greatest, um, experience in this lifetime, show Mm -hmm. me my, you know, my, my path or what I'm to become, or, you know, show me, um, I'm going to coin another amazing channel who I'm sure we're going to have on uh, sometime, but I'm going to, I'm going to actually use her phrase because I think it sums it up so beautifully. Her name's Natalie Granja and she, um, this phrase of most abundant timeline, Mm. you can ask to be shown your most abundant timeline. And the thing is, is if you get a glimpse of this, it'll give you a glimpse of your purpose it'll give you a glimpse of why you're here, what you came here to set, like what you set out to achieve, Mm -hmm. you know, did you achieve it? So the thing is, is that when you go into this meditation and you clear, you don't have to clear your mind. If thoughts come in, let them come in, let them go out. You know, eventually your brain will realize that it's safe in this space and it'll stop that nonsense. But If you, if you sit in the meditation and going into the meditation, you say, my intention is to receive what my purpose is, to receive what my plan is, Mm -hmm. to see my most abundant timeline. Mm -hmm. And then you just start doing it. Eventually it will plop in and you will see. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, that brings up something and I don't know, we probably don't have enough time to really dive into it. So maybe we'll have to have a purpose 2.0. Um, (laughs) when you're given your purpose and and I'm sure you can expand on this, Heather, um, sometimes you're not given all of the step-by-step instructions. Hey, (laughs) yeah. Hey, you're going to free the world from money and bring in new earth currency. (laughs) What now? Um, Mm -hmm. uh, and I, for those of you who have seen maybe a larger vision for what their life is supposed to look like and are stuck in that, I just want to, I just, I want to, you know, get started and and go, you know, um, it's okay, um, to take a breath and, you know, time is, uh, is our thing. (laughs) And I'm constantly reminding myself that things happen really, really quickly in divine timing. So, you know, it might've taken me 30, 30 some years to get here, but in a very short period of time, I've been able to, you know, understand a whole lot and to, to, you know, lots of stuff has like the steps. That's the words I'm struggling with. My brain's a little foggy, but the, the steps have all come in so perfectly as I've curiously listened to where I go next without that judgment of, oh, this doesn't look like it's a part of the plan. I, you know, that research about, you know, currency. I had no idea why I was doing that and then how I ended up at the Titanic. Um, okay, none of this makes sense. <laughs> but eventually it all came together and I could see the puzzle pieces and was kind of like floored. Like, oh, wow, I, have, I haven't just been screwing around this whole time. <laughs> this was yeah. on purpose. There was a point to this, but I was just so curious and so willing to follow that voice um, and, and be led in whatever direction without that judgment of like, this doesn't sound like it's relevant. I just went with it. So, so allow yourself to be led by curiosity to, to be led where you're supposed to go. And without that judgment of it shouldn't look like this, because what if it's supposed to? Right. Right. I mean, and, and I think that you, you capture that so beautifully, like it may seem, uh, nonsensical, Mm -hmm. just follow it anyway. 
You know, there's so much more to experience, you know, there's more to the universe, spirituality, beings, life on other planets. I mean, there's so much more than this singular physical experience that we're having right now. And, you know, on, you know, with regard to your, your purpose and why you came here, it is a huge undertaking. And it is something that you have spent many lifetimes along with this lifetime gearing up for. Mm -hmm. Look at how hard you have worked to get to come in at this time and finish the job. And when you do, the whole world is going to be free. Mm -hmm. And it's such a beautiful gift, really. You know, all of those hours that you spent with sticky notes all over the freaking place, you know, (laughs) us channeling information that was stripped off of the internet (laughs) in order for the puzzle pieces to come together. And, you know, when, when this project rolls out, it's going to be, oh, extraordinary, truly, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Everyone's Mind probably going, blown. what is the thing? <laughs> <laughs> we already told you, rewind. <laughs> <laughs> going back right. to that listening thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Amazing. Well, we're, we're running out of time here. If you've liked this video, I want you to click that like button right now. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel and that you hit the notification button so that you never miss our lives. We're here every week on Tuesday and next week will be more of this gold. Um, Maybe we'll even have a special guest. Ooh, we will see. (laughs) We will see. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye.